Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast, powered by the African American Marketing Association. Each week, we'll bring you an insightful conversation from some of the best experts in our industry on how to advance our career. Join the collective of Black marketers across the world, advancing their brand as we work towards creating a collaborative community. Hey, good people. Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Gamay, And today I have not one, but two, two special guests from our sponsor, HP. So, Esanam and Katie, welcome to the show. How are y'all doing today? We're doing pretty good. You turned that on good. <laughs> doing great, Michelle. Glad to be here. Yes, I'm so grateful to have y'all. Um, so if you can take a moment to introduce yourself and tell our listeners what you do, not just with the company, but in life in general, outside of work. I'll let you go first. This time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Katie. So um, I've been with HP for just under eight years now, and I'm in the marketing organization. Um, and in a nutshell, what I do is I really work with a lot of our um, local marketing reps and sales team to really activate a lot of the campaigns that they're trying to drive locally to really sell our business. So I'm actually part of the workforce services and solutions uh, organization. Something HP is now getting into just the focus on services and customer experience is big. And so as a tech company, we want to add that service onto all our customers um, purchases with our company. And one thing that I'm really big on is how do we ensure the customer gets the right product? How do we ensure uh, that they're happy? And how do we how do we arm our sales team with what they need to be able to satisfy our customers? Um, outside of work, I'm a mom of two kids. So as a working mom, you know, it's always a juggle. So every day is completely different from the day before. But I think at the end of the day, it just really rounds me out. I'm grounded. I, I'm i uh, focused. I'm determined. And I just love the adventure of what I do on a daily basis, both at home and at work. I love it. Katie? Awesome. Um, and to Esanam's point, I'm also in the circus. Um, <laughs> I'm a ringleader um, of 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 creativity, of strategy, um, of my son, my six-year-old. And um, just keeping everything in the ring and keeping the show going. Um, for HP specifically, um, I've just actually gotten back as of 2020. Um, I worked at HP about 10 years ago in the travel space, running their PMO office, um, especially during that time when United and Continental Airlines merged. So I managed all the craziness of that, um, left for a little bit, went to a couple different agencies. Um, and then I came back and now I'm in the internal agency of HP called HP Studio, um, where we create all of the content. So Marcom Program Management is my title. Um, and pretty much I'm making all the visuals um, that you see from HP, from video to lifestyle photography, um, to product imagery, below the fold marketing, um, anything that you can look at, we're doing it over here. Um, so that, that's pretty much my background. Um, I'm in Houston, Texas, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> she brings life to all our creativity. So, Katie, I'm very curious because um, you went from, I'll say, an external agency to an internal agency. Um, when you arrived at HP the second time, did they already have that internal agency in place or was that a fairly new concept? It was fairly new. So the agency I was with before um, was called Anadin and basically it was, it, we were somewhat the internal agency. We had a very close relationship with the product marketing team and the uh, industrial design team. So our close relationship with them allowed us to create a lot of like the, the baseline images of product. Um, so you can say we were like the sister, the, the little sister company. Um, and eventually, you know, as the economy changed, which Rightfully so, HP decided to create an internal agency of their own, and they started doing that in parallel um, with Anadin, kind of uh, moving the business little by little. So, yes, it was it was created before I got here, but it was definitely modeled after the agency I was with before. So it was more of a continuation of learnings versus you know going from a completely different agency working with completely different partners to HP internal. 
Yeah, it's a very interesting concept. It's a good move too for absolutely a, a company that size. I think it's very smart. Totally. Except for when we go for um, like content awards, <laughs> you know, we, we're up against as an internal agency, we're up against different agencies that have worked with, you know, several brands, whereas we are HP focused only. Um, we do have a house of brands, right? We have Poly, HyperX. Um, and so we have other brands we can work with, but the the plethora of things that we work on to, to be focused on hardware specifically. So sometimes I do miss having that diversity of different, you know, companies that we work with. Um, but I mean, there's so much in HP, we have enough to do. <laughs> All right. So I would like to start with SNM. Um, you've had an interesting career journey from what I've captured. Uh, mm -hmm. How has HP supported you um, through your career transitions? Oh, my God. So I think that if no one says anything else about HP, it's definitely the place to grow your career. HP totally and completely supports, you know, people that want to try different functions. So prior to HP, I actually was an engineer. I started my early career right out of grad, uh, right out of grad school, in fact, as an engineer. Um, was an engineer for about three or four years and then went back to the business school and switched careers into marketing completely. And Lo and behold, I never really saw sought out um, HP initially. I think I was truly focused on CPG, but I think I stumbled upon HP in my move, ge geographical move from New York to Houston. And it's like all of a sudden my prior experience and my current interests all just came together. My background as an engineer, plus my current interest in marketing, all just kind of made it made it a perfect entry or segue into um, a role as a pure pure marketer. Um, within HP, I've tried different things. I actually started off as a product manager, which is very different from a marketing specialist. And as a product manager, you're completely responsible for the product itself. So I was responsible for uh, one of the products called the desktop minis, the HP commercial desktop minis. It's a it's an actual desktop that sits. It's really small. It sits on your on your on your desk, but you know it allowed me to fully understand what went into the development of an actual product that you see out in stores and online today. Um, and then from there, I uh, started to develop an interest in okay, well, how do we market these desktops? You know, they don't just sell themselves, right? Once we make these great products, how do we get them into the customers' hands? So there was an opportunity for me to actually raise my hand as a product manager and ask for some, you know, responsibilities that allowed me to learn a little bit more about that. And with that sort of uh, decision on my part to to kind of step out of my comfort zone and, and take on more responsibilities and just to learn, I was able to use that and make a full transition into, into classical marketing that you see at HP um, today. And I, I don't expect it to stop there. I have heard many people make transitions from one function into HR and then back into product management. I mean, HP is completely supportive of those moves because we really value the people that that gain the skills and what they can bring to the new role despite what function they came from before. I want to stay with you for a moment because you said something interesting with you having an engineering background Mm -hmm. plus marketing and then HP just allowed all of your worlds to collide. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I see with, you know, people our age, my members, particularly um, that mid-level career transition. Can you talk about the importance of communicating your transferable skills on paper as well as in an interview? Oh, yeah. And Michelle, I feel like I'm still on that learning journey, you know, so I think the best thing you need to do is seek out a mentor or someone that's familiar with the role you aspire to and have them educate you on what skills are required. And you can even walk through them, have that conversation around what skills you currently have that are transferable to that role. So, for example, I at some point really thought I was going to be a great fit for human resources. I mean, what would an engineer with a marketing, you know, 
background offer to someone or offer to the human resources function. At the time, I thought none. But come to find out, we actually quite a few transferable skills. You know, we talk a lot about customer experience and really elevating the customer experience. Well, HR does that as well for their employees. And it's not a skill ingrown or in-house or bred within uh, the HR department. So they look for people with that skill from other, other functions. So you would be surprised at the breadth of transferable skills that exist. But the first step is finding out what those skills need, what skills are needed for the role you want to move into, and then start to talk through what skills you have today. And the third thing is, if you don't have them, that's still not um, a reason to not pursue it. Find out what you can do today to start to gain those skills. And I know people say this time and time again, but it cannot be stressed enough. And it doesn't take long to truly gain a skill. You can gain a skill in as quickly or as easily as three months and boom, you have a new skill on your resume that you can speak to in an interview and quickly transition into your new role. So there isn't a lag of time in trying to move into a new role. It's just more of lack of knowledge of knowing what skills to speak to and what to highlight when you're kind of preparing for that transition. Thank you. That's a different perspective. Uh, Katie, how has um, HP supported you through your career transitions? Ubi, <laughs> HP has been in my life for so long. My mother worked at HP. There's never been a time in my life where someone that I knew either on a personal or professional level didn't work for HP or were, was married to someone who worked for HP. <laughs> so I will say they've been supporting me for a long time. Um, when I actually first got out of school, that was the PMO office job that I got uh, with the travel sector at HPE was my first job ever. <laughs> um, and so I would say the biggest thing HP has done to support me throughout my career is HP has so many programs. Um, they, they're they such a huge global company. And that's why that's one of the reasons I came back. The safety and the, the comfort of being in a global company that has so much access to all of these different programs, whether it be something like ITSMF, whether it be um, like a, a college, a collegiate program, a um like a, a girls who code program. I mean, there's, there's, they have so many different partnerships. So if you wanted to learn skills, if you wanted to volunteer, if you wanted to jump into a different space, it's so big that there's so many places you can go within HP. Um, so that's, that's been a super help because you don't always have to jump off the curb and go to a completely different company, learn a completely new culture and learn, you know, a completely new set of people. Um, so it's been, it's, it's given me a wide breadth of, of, places where I can go within the company and that's been supportive. But in addition, I think just the people, um, the culture of HP is one yeah. that is, they are really, really, really big on learning. Um, so to SNM's point, if you have a, a role that you're interested in and you do not have the background, HP will tell you, come on, <laughs> come on and we'll teach you how to do it. Um, and then we'll, we'll give you the mentors that you need to get through it. Um, and if you don't like it, you can make a different decision. You're not stuck anywhere. So, you know, being, being able to have the opportunities available, being in a, a, a huge company where I can go anywhere that I want in the world. I can go anywhere in the building, anywhere across the business from, you know, a different functional perspective has been super supportive. And then lastly, um, I think SNM also said this, you know, mentorship. Um, there's There are a lot of people within HP that are not only students um, from the business, but also teachers. I think everybody at HP seems to aim to not only be, you know, a, a student, but also a teacher, and then we have a big culture of giving back. So there's always someone with their hand out ready to help you. And so that's been that's been huge. And and Esnam, I've just <laughs> we've recently become close because you know our we have a common mentor. Um, who was a VP in the building also. And she's, you know, been putting us on projects together. And I think it's because um, she's also recommended, she's like, you should be a product manager and just learning that about s I'm like, look at that. <laughs> she's yeah. like, you're there. I'm going to put you with people that did that. So you can start to see, you know, where your career might go next. And slowly but surely, I am starting to see myself in that role. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a really big community um, and culture of learning and of relationships and of, you know, reaching your hand out. And that's how HP, you know, been supported. And, and, and Michelle, if I could just tell, um, add on to that one big piece, in addition to that is, and you don't find this in most organizations, um, is your managers are actually pushing you 
to define your career. They're actually asking, what do you want to do? You know, there's there's so much um, of manager investment in your career than I've seen at most organizations. Once you start the conversation with your manager, you would be surprised at how they kind of quickly switch into mentor role, sharing their experiences, experiences navigating through, you know, the wide world of HP and the different uh, career choices you can make. But I just wanted to add to that, that you'd be surprised at how supportive a manager is of a career transition you're interested in making and how they could even help you get your, your next role. Yeah, that's so important. Um, I know one thing that I learned, especially in my 20s, and every now and then we see the different quotes floating online, but, you know, people do quit because of management, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, And I've been in those situations when I was working in financial services, great companies, mm -hmm. but my direct report and I, we just couldn't get on the same page for whatever reason. So mm -hmm. it's good to, when you do find the right company to have that nurturing relationship from your leader. Exactly. I'll add one last thing to that. If you're in those situations, and they do exist, <laughs> they do exist even within HP where people are not on the same page as their manager. Mm -hmm. There's a culture within HP too where, you know, before you get the door, they'll say, look around and see where you'd like to go. Mm -hmm. So that's another piece of it also. You always get an opportunity to find another you know, another choice or go down a different path. And I think, I, I don't know, I haven't really been shown the door too many times in my career, but um, I, I do love that that's available. And I've heard from plenty of people within the business who are like, you know, I was on the verge of just leaving, but then I found something else. Um, and so that I think contributes as well. That's true. That's so true. So HP is a very innovative company. And obviously we're hearing a lot about chat GPT and AI. So I'm just kind of curious um, if you know, or from your work experience, um, what is HP doing within the AI space or maybe your overall thoughts regarding AI? I have a lot of thoughts <laughs> on AI. <laughs> AI. AI is here to stay. That's, that's my, my, my rounding thought. Um, but in terms of HP and AI right now, what we're doing is we're, we're in the investigation phase. Um, very much like um, you see a lot of companies now um, that are racing to be the first to do everything, right? Um, and I think HP has always had a culture and I totally agree with it <laughs> that you never really need to be the first. I, I never buy the first... Um, phone when it comes out, right? I, I wait until it breaks. Everybody complains about it. They make it better. And then I want it. Um, same thing with AI. I think HP is taking a really responsible approach um, because we are in the securities business as well as the hardware, software, and services business. And so because of that, with data being so volatile right now, um, I think it's really key that we're making safe and ethical choices um, for our consumers when we jump into things like AI, where data is you know, the main driving component. Um, we're looking at how to use it internally in the business to be efficient, right? So that we can maximize the potential of our resources. And then we're also looking at it into our hardware. We have like immersive technologies that we're investigating to see what the future of tech will be. I would, I, I, I can't really go 100% into it, but I will say if you've seen the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson, you know, that's the future of what technology I think is going to be. And there's so much AI in that movie, it's ridiculous. Um, so that would definitely give you a clue in terms of where we're going. Um, but I'll I'll kind of pause right there and I'm sure we can keep getting into it <laughs> as we go. You know, that's a really honest answer. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I do a few interviews and, you know, you always hear these stories on how some founder wants to be the leading, you know, X, Y, Z in their niche. And it's like, everything's really new, right? <laughs> <laughs> everything's really new. You don't have to rush through this process. But I also understand um, with the quick evolution of AI, obviously it's reaching the masses, the price points going down, things of that nature. Um, and it's creating a sense of urgency for everyone to kind of just get on because they do want to be first. Exactly. And and I've always thought too, right? You, you never want to be the first. 
Um, you never want to be the best. You want to be the only. <laughs> so I think you know, for HP, it's really good to be responsible and find out what what really makes sense for our customer. Um, and not just, you know, what information can we put in and get information out quickly? We have researchers that do that. We're a huge company. <laughs> we are about people. Um, so we're not, you know, looking at this as how can we eliminate as many jobs as possible? Because the truth is AI exposes many professions that people have gotten degrees, you know, and gone to school for years to study. Um, but, but we are at a time where evolution is required. And so if, you know, if you've got a job that a computer can do now, what does that mean? <laughs> what do you need to do now? How do you evolve your role? How do you evolve your skill set? How do you evolve the way you process information and um, and use your unique creativity and consciousness to to push the world forward? I think that's the question that HP is answering right now, and it'll it'll take us a little while to get there. But just like um like Dave and Bill are founders um, who created the audio oscillator in the garage, I think it'll take us a little time. But when we do find it. We will be the only one, I think, you know, that will have the solution that we put forward. I love it. I love it. So um, yesterday I saw this survey. It says that there's like less than 10 percent of black people or black marketers, which I'm always astonished by this stat, because when I look in, you know, my network, it's like 100 <laughs> percent. So I guess my question is, you know, what advice do you have um, for Black marketers, regardless of their space, right? Small business owner, agency, corporate. Uh, what are some things that they need to be aware of in order for them to grow as an expert? Wow, that is a great question. And you're right. I do have the same, you know, thoughts as you do, Michelle. I mean, maybe we have the same network now as we get to know each other better, but um Gosh, you know, I think what worked for me is really being vocal about my passion for marketing. For marketing, um, there was absolutely nobody that met me that didn't walk away with knowing that that's where my passion was. Um, so it's almost as if you have to really embrace and embody that um, skill of personal branding. What do people know about you? What are people, um, what are you going to be known for? What do you want to be known for? Now, are there barriers? Yes. I do feel like, you know, as Black women or Black people in general, we have to communicate maybe a whole lot more often um, than people of other races, just to be able to kind of get your, your, your voice heard and what you really want to do. Now, a great thing that we all absolutely need, in addition to that, is an amazing sponsor, right? And again, you know, I think it's a step that I find people try to uh, not take, perhaps either lack of knowledge or just not even knowing who to approach or even not knowing the concept exists. It is really hard to become exposure, get that visibility without that sponsor, without that sponsorship. Um, and people that really believe in you and believe in your in your, in your ability to to be a strong marketer. Um, I know in HP, we're gradually growing our pool of diverse talent, which includes black marketers and female, uh, female black marketers. It's gradually growing. Could it be faster? Absolutely. But at the same time, you you kind of have to look at where were we, you know, not too long ago and start to kind of think about it that way. What I know and really like to push for is, you know, selling the value of diversity to leadership. Um, one big value of diversity is now that we're all focused on it, we need diverse talent to not only represent what our customer, you know, segment is, but to also have an eye for what um, creativity we're putting out there. You know, how many times have you seen other companies put uh, created out there that they immediately had to retract and then issue a PR statement because it fell short of um, what we would have expected a company that was uh, tone sensitive to produce. We find that time and time again it becomes a big PR issue. So sometimes, you know, that's the thing that has to be re-emphasized, i.e. I am here to help us as an organization make sure that we're uh, speaking to the broad masses, to different races. And as a marketer, you, you, you add that value in addition to your 
ability to wear the marketing hat and, and just really drive that that strategy for the company. Yeah, I love it. Um, I think one thing, and I had to learn, and I think sometimes you kind of grow into it, it's just being a self-advocate and believing in yourself, getting rid of the imposter syndrome. Um, that's going to allow you to fully show up um, obviously beyond race and culture, but, you know, with your education and experience and be like, hey, I know something and I have something to say regarding this project, but also my career and things that I want to do and I want to do them here. I agree. I think being aware of yourself and where you sit in the business um, always and making sure that you prioritize um, your goals, I think, over everything. I think as a Black marketer, I think those are interesting questions to ask about what's the best way that, you know, a Black marketer might navigate the business. I used to approach everything as just a marketer, you know, as a marketer first um, with my goals in mind. And then later I would realize, you know, it does matter. Your race does matter. <laughs> um, and you don't realize it until you start interacting with people and you start to see, you know, some things that maybe you don't want to recognize. Um, they, they do play a part. But again, that's self-awareness and recognizing what your goals are and staying to the, staying true to them, regardless of what's going on. I think that's like the biggest thing I would say is self-awareness. So we have the Marketing for the Culture Summit coming up. Um, HP is the title sponsor, making all things possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we have Wednesday, May 31st, the kickoff reception um, at Upper, Key, Upper Kirby Bistro at 6 p.m. Thursday, we have the summit at United Way, uh, pretty much from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, we have a ton of breakout sessions on branding, content, digital marketing, PR, supplier diversity. Um, we have Terrell Smith from your camp. He'll be on that panel. And then we have Danielle Jones also from your team who will be the keynote, which will be very exciting. Um, followed by the VIP brunch on Friday, which we have Joseph Williams, the director of PR uh, at Stars. So if you watch all of the, all of the, uh, uh, our, our, um, he's creating PR campaigns for that. And, um, and that's going to be moderated by Vanessa Darby, who's the digital marketing manager of which at Shondaland. So these people are running like the hottest TV shows right now, which is really interesting. But what are you most excited about when it comes to the Marketing for the Culture Summit next week? I'm excited for the community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that it's, you know, I love for one that the African-American Marketing Association exists. Um, and I'm excited to just see, you know, what that community will bring to the table, what conversations will be had, um, what, you know, information will be uncovered. I think we do have, you know, like I said, even though I, even though I approach marketing as a marketer first, I think culture informs so much of marketing. It's out of control, right? Um, it informs the way that we do messaging. It informs what things are important to what people. And so as black marketers, I think there is definitely a unique voice um, to be heard. And I'm just excited to hear it. I'm excited to be a part of the the festivities. And of course, I've mentioned many times, I love brunch, so I'm ready for the brunch. <laughs> Let's talk some more. <laughs> That's awesome. And you know, I, I, I'm in the same boat. You know, what I, I, I've gone through the agenda, you know, the topics are all intriguing. Um, I would say, I am most looking forward to seeing a room of people like me, like-minded people like me. Now, I just feel like as African Americans, we have so much to offer the marketing community. Um, our creativity is, is vibrant. I am just really looking forward to hearing others, you know, share their experiences, share their best practices, um, us taking that back. And actually sharing with our counterparts here because nothing is better than being able to go into our communities, learn something, and bring it back to others, and then just you know enlighten them about the the community that we have and how much knowledge exists within the community. So 
Michelle, kudos to you. You are a true marketing leader. I, you know, I absolutely love the way the, the summit came together. And I just love seeing the branding and the promotions and just cheering for, you know, the excitement that's about to happen next week. And I didn't just, you know, excitedly telling everyone about it. So, so we're going to be there. We're going to be there in our numbers. So <laughs> really looking forward to it. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. Um, we're going to have a really good time. We're going to have a good time all three days. And I think this, there's so many, many testimonials in this process, but I'm going to share that for the day of the event. <laughs> awesome. I will add also, you know, um, black owned agencies are a big deal. Yes. <laughs> as a creative content person, I'm excited to make connections in that space as well. So, you know, any, any, um, black owned agencies or just, you know, multicultural agencies that we can add to the roster and, you know, build relationships with, that is my task. Please find me. Ooh. All right. That's the sound bite. That's the sound bite. So, oh man, is there anything that I haven't asked? that needs to be shared. I think, you know what? I'm just going to add this little sound bite out there because I think the world needs to hear it. <laughs> I think when it comes to AI, I know we didn't go super deep on the topic, but when it comes to AI, I would love to see more people of color creating data sets and training, um, training these new technologies um, so that we're not just implementing them and adapting them, but we're driving them as well. So there's my, that's my takeaway. Absolutely. And um, focus, uh, participating in focus groups, mm -hmm. um, just a user experience, providing that type of feedback so it can be improved is important as well. So thank you. Yeah, Katie is a true pioneer in this space. She has taught me so much. So I'm on board with Katie and really trying to push for more people of color in that space and, and you know, going out there and educating others. Because guess what? We bring the creativity to a lot of this technology. Uh, what I love to add is, hey, I am a people person. I love mentoring. I love helping others within the community. I mean, I've learned so much from the people around me and even my own career. So connect with me on LinkedIn, you know, hit me up. I'm, you know, so open to, you know, getting to know people and getting to meet people and then just helping people, you know, navigate this this world that we're in, we're in right now. We're gonna do this together. So. So connect with me. Well, I want to thank you both for allowing us to have this conversation about Blacks and marketing and pretty much pretty back. Um, very, very grateful to be in contact with y'all and can't wait to see you next week. Grateful to you too. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak on your platform um, and also be a part of your event. Um, I'm super excited and super proud of you for doing this. So excited. So excited. Thank you so much, Michelle. This is great. Thank you. All right, good people. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Marketing for the Culture podcast. Remember, you can get tickets for the summit on our website, aa-ma.org or on Eventbrite. Um, you can also send us an email at info at aa-ma.org if you have any questions. As always, I believe in you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Marketing for the Culture podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. And of course, our videos are on YouTube. If you have a moment, feel free to give us a rate, review, or just comment. We appreciate our sponsors for their continuous support. Also, if you're interested in learning more about our sponsors or becoming a member of the African American Marketing Association, visit aa-ma.org.